Hello and happy Wednesday, everyone. It's Meredith. I'm here with our message for the 27th of April. And we have Bonefire and Tarot Avatara down on the table and the shuffle was absolutely humming. Everything in Bonefire came out in pairs. So that's how we will read them. A little bit of that going on over here too in Tarot Avatara, our moon phase today is shifting out of Pisces into Aries. And while I was here shuffling the cards and looking at the moon phase, the word hinky <laughs> kept floating in. So it feels as though there is a little bit of hinky energy out there in the atmosphere for us. Let's see what the tarot cards have to say about it. We are gonna focus first on the moon phase. And I also feel the steam rising off of watery Pisces and fiery Aries. So I feel alchemy here too. And maybe that's where the hinky energy comes from. So let's go here. Oh, nice. <laughs> Ooh, actually, this is pretty cool. We have love, the lovers and the death card. These two fell out together. So I'm sensing a subtle transformation within the divine union found on the lover's card and yeah subtle trans i'll get it subtle transformation with profound effect there's great alchemy just between these two cards the lover's card is about choosing with heart you know we make a heartfelt choice and We've seen quite a bit of the, de uh, the death card. I was going to say the devil. <laughs> hmm. Perhaps there's an influence there too. See, we're already off to a hinky start here. <laughs> okay, death card is transformation. It's death and rebirth. And I feel the contemplation and the consideration, reconsideration, the interesting questions we challenge ourselves with in recent days, as suggested by the tarot cards, have produced a subtle yet profound shift on our foundation. Let's see where it's going here in the moon phase. This she fell out. So next is Six of Cups. Look at the artwork there. You know, we're inside the heart space and this is one of those channeling download intuitive awareness cards. It's our, it's our soulful presence channeling to our waking consciousness or a new concept emerging from the subconscious into the waking consciousness. And it is something that is emotionally rich and moving for us. Heart space centered over here. This is what we're connecting with in the lovers and the death card, which is moving us into a victory energy in the six of wands success. And again, that's a message of homecoming to the self. There's an expansion going on that begins in a subtle way and fulfills profoundly for us. Though I feel, I feel that we encounter a challenge as we accept and allow. Some part of us may be in resistance to this transformation simply out of the comfort of what feels familiar, which we've seen in the the, <laughs> the devil card recently, which has popped out. And this time I wanted to call the devil card the death card. So I sense that they're working together here in, in the cards for us, in the message that's emerging. The death card is profound transformation. And it's it's a card we talk about in sweeping gestures, you know, clearing the foundation. We've seen the death card and the high priestess come together in these readings and we are able to have a very expansive view of what is serving us, what is not serving us. And the death card is there to sweep away what no longer serves so that it can be 
energetically, spiritually recycled. Let's see what comes next. These two cards came out together and we have the Princess of Cups. So there's an offer. And the star, we had the star in the moon phase, I think in yesterday's reading as well. So there's, there's energy emerging. We, we have been in prayer, in meditation, in a heart focused way within our self relationship, the lovers. And from, from this space within self on our foundation, we are being quite selective in what we choose or the quality of energies that we engage. We're selective about the quality of energies we're engaging at this time because we've seen so many of the cups, the nine, the 10, the ace, they continue to pop out for us and we're always so excited to see them. It speaks to an emotional upgrade. So this tendency toward the familiar soundtrack of the ego vulture thoughts is being examined in a deep way for us because we feel what emerges, what rises uh, within us out of the subconscious and that emotional heart space richness is so fulfilling. This is what, this is what spills out of the ace of cups for us. And this is what we celebrate. This is our preference, let's say. And having the star show up two days in a row uh, speaks to our strength, our dedication, our commitment to what we have in heart space. And we've been talking a lot about being our raw, authentic selves, not watering this down, not holding this back because this expansive energy feels so good, so fulfilling that the frequency upgrade in that is drawing to us like energy, more of the same. And it's exciting for us. And what, what filters in, what sneaks in is that old soundtrack occasionally. And we, we end up facing it and there's some alchemy, there's some steam, there's some water meeting fire, right? And we're making a change. It's a buzzword change. <laughs> People talk about resisting it, going into it, kicking and screaming. Though this again, feels like preference. We've chosen this. And the page of cups, you see the fish coming out of the cup in traditional tarot. And that is the act of our desire, our manifestation, our preference emerging onto our foundation. And it's all because of what we've invested here in the star. We've remade our world. We've remade our life after many towers have fallen. I was speaking with one of my oldest and dearest friends yesterday and she was commenting on how she's witnessing her own tower come down one brick at a time. And as we were doing uh, her tarot cards, the message that came out of that was as one brick gets taken down off that old foundation, that old tower, it's being upgraded, recycled and cemented into place on the new foundation. And I feel that energy here in the moon phase aspect of the reading. And I feel the passion, the steam that's rising here out of the Pisces Aries shift of the moon phase. I feel that we are bringing, for some of you, closure to older energies because you have different preferences now. And we are in the process of witnessing our dream and our vision evolve right in front of us. And this is a message that's come on repeat for us from the cards in recent days. Let's take a look at the Awakened Soul deck. What is our soulful presence whispering to us today? <laughs> magic, we're making magic. <laughs> of course we are, we are the magic, but 
you know, just take a look at this artwork. Look at her hand, the infinity loop there in the fire. There is alchemy afoot today. We are, it feels as though we are engaged with an energy atmosphere that is ripe for change. So whatever it is we're holding here in our beautiful six of cups, heart space energy in our soulmate our own best self soulmate energy we can bring to life we can put on our foundation page of cups princess of cups what we've been drawing down out of the stars magically for ourselves Ooh, wow that gave me a shiver i like it all right let's move over to bone fire this is the energy atmosphere of the day our first two cards we have <laughs> yeah i know Ten of Swords, it never looks welcoming, does it? Oh, nice, with the Ten of Wands. You know, if you just read these two cards traditionally, <laughs> and don't take my intuitive uh, influence on it at all, uh, you'd probably stop the reading right there. Hold on, though, because the Ten of Swords is the Fallen Master. See, this is... This is spiritual molting. This is like a snake shedding its skin here. And it coincides nicely with the message of the moon. So when we reach the 10 of swords, that's the ace of swords to the power of 10, right? Brilliant clarity, everlasting strength, authenticity, truth. Uh, so ace of swords to the power of 10. And when we reach the 10 of swords here, we're moving on. We literally are shedding some sort of energetic skin. And here we've got the 10 of wands accompanying it. It speaks to our inspired journey because that's the ace of wands to the power of 10. That's inspiration, creativity, passion, fire. So this is a tremendous amount of collective wisdom, knowledge, and experience ready to be applied to what is evolving from the death card in the divine unity within self-sovereignty. Yeah, take a moment with that one, right? <laughs> mm. Again, we're talking preference. We prefer to enjoy the emotional richness of, of life and love emanating and emerging, channeling from, through our heart space. Next we have, well, you know, the first three cards over here on this side are just <laughs> so, so encouraging. Here we have the five of cups. This is instability, emotional instability. I'm not actually surprised to see that in light of the message that we're receiving over here in the moon phase. And this is... A great artistic demonstration representation of what it can feel like to shift out of an energy that is familiar <laughs> I know it doesn't look that great the five of cups is is emotional pain loss and sorrow like we see with the three of swords pain loss and sorrow of the past piercing the heart in I feel that ego soundtrack in the Five of Cups. It's familiar. It's known. It's a well-worn path, though it doesn't necessarily serve, which is why it is unstable. It may require a wee bit of validation in practical terms. You know, truly, like the lovers, embrace oneself and say, yeah, okay, I can feel this instability. It's not comfortable. I'd rather do what is known, what is comfortable. Though I have these two lit up cups awaiting me. And what is the promise there? The promise there is what's emerging out of the Princess of Cups and the star over here that brings great inner fulfillment. We'd rather go there. Though the ego wants its pound of flesh. And that's an old story too. So to bring stability, emotional stability, what we're witnessing over here in the moon phase, we need to bring our passion and our joy and our happiness and our wisdom and experience of the Ten of Swords and the Ten of Wands. We need to bring that to bear on the Five of Cups when we have these moments that 
are fleeting, though they are also profound and they leave a mark, don't they? When you feel something to its depth, there is a tendency toward lingering there, which may serve or may not serve. And the Five of Cups says there's instability, so it doesn't necessarily serve. Validate it, love it with unconditional kindness and passion. Have a passion for the contrast because this gives us the perspective to choose differently and make new magic for ourselves. So the Five of Cups is very important here. Oh, look at this. Because it comes with the Nine of Cups. And that's exactly what we're focused on through the star. This is what is emerging through the page. And here we have yet another connection to the Death card. Keep your third eye focused on your Six of Cups lovers, right? We've got three sixes over here, by the way, with the Six of Wands, Six of Cups, and the lovers on the table. Just a little bit of numerology for those who are into it. <laughs> anyway, this Nine of Cups is what is awaiting us in the Two of Cups off the Five. So remember that the Five, though unstable, is necessary so that we have contrast and perspective. And it is meant for passing, which is, you know, it's, an emo it's emotional and emotions are temporary. They flow if we allow them. They stick and they stay if we are in resistance. And with the Nine of Cups sitting there with the Five of Cups, why would we not want to flow into the Nine? Ace of Cups to the power of Nine, dreams coming true, star, page, right? Beautiful energy, magic happening. And then we have... <laughs> Ooh! Okay, we have the Seven of Wands and the star coming together. We'll fight for it. <laughs> okay, sevens in tarot, I remind. They are heaven touching earth within us in the heart space, six of cups. So beautifully done. Just take another peek at that card. Uh, what I see here is passionate determination, passionate commitment to the nine of cups to the star, to the page, to the six, all of it, death, the lovers, all of this is so emotionally fulfilling. These cards are telling us that fulfillment may temporarily five be uncomfortable, but we have more than enough wisdom experience and resource to see ourselves through any instability. So this is a change that is taking place for us on the foundation. Our choices today to simplify this are resistance, <laughs> or acceptance, unconditional love and kindness for the self or an old ego soundtrack that would keep us rooted right where we are. And there's no wrong answer here. There's no judgment here. Sometimes we linger. Sometimes we do stay for, for a bit of perceived time to get the very most out of the contrast that's being offered up to us here in the cards. So you'll move when you're ready. Just know that this, this charge is out here in the atmosphere and you have the potential to make amazing magic that fulfills in a really juicy, loving way. <laughs> okay, let's see what's on the bottom of the deck, what's in the unseen. Oh, hey, why not? <laughs> yeah, so, you know, we have it on the emotional level. We've got the Three of Swords here. And this is pain, loss, and sorrow of the past. And again, it's connected so nicely to that Five of Cups. And it's a reference point if we allow it to be. And it's temporary if we allow it to be. So it's it's about garnering our gains and, and calling up our memory field and running our fingers through it again and saying, you know, what did I learn from that? What did I glean? What was the silver lining? How has it shaped me into this now moment so that I can make these new loving choices that are so much more nine of cups fulfilling star for me now? And then in turn, how does this benefit my sphere of influence and everyone I am connected to and with here, right? You are not your past. You are your now. 
And if you are influenced heavily by the past, how might you want to shift that? How might you want to shed that skin? Oh, nice. So we have another repeat here in the Six of Wands coming back again. Victory. See, there is victory here. There is a grace to the movement, momentum, and flow of the day. And we're, we're aimed right at success within self-relationship. Oh, my gosh. Because look what's under that. Ace of Cups. Beautiful. And then, last but not least here. Oh, see? Seven of coins, harvest on the vine. There is a bounty that is flowing in. Okay, I got to go one more because it's the lovers. So we have a lot of repeat here. So we are in great harmony with the universe at in these moments as this day flows and evolves. And we're very focused on the heart of the matter, which is divine union within self to be shared within our sphere of influence with our nearest and dearest. That is magical oh okay let's do angel answers what do the angels have to say what questions have you for them what will they confirm for us we have are you ready <laughs> we're ready for this absolutely we are and this feels slightly uncomfortable, though it brings great joy and overflowing blessings to us. Meditation brings answers. Great, great message here because it says, go to contemplation when you feel the discomfort of the Three of Swords and the Five of Cups. Know that what is rising is also passing and stay in the flow with it. There is a temporary nature to that five and it's bringing a gift. So if we stay present, we stay connected to heart space, we will see the silver lining and we will we'll be in awe for that. Same with that three of swords. Let's take a look at what comes next. Falling on the floor, we have, <laughs> there's something better. Yeah, and you're it, the magic. There is something better. That is you, the heart of you, bringing that out. Allowing this spiritual molting to happen. Oh, another one on the floor. We've got opportunity. Yeah, there's an opportunity here for us. And I don't sense that we will hesitate to take it. <laughs> All right, last final thoughts here on the reading from Wisdom of the Oracle. Three cards came out of this shuffle. Our first one is... <laughs> nice. Come to the Edge, which is so reminiscent of yesterday's reading. Isn't that fabulous? We were talking about... If uh, yeah, we were talking about coming to the edge of our own sphere of influence and getting comfortable out there with our beautiful, raw, vulnerable, sovereign self. So come to the edge. And I feel that these cards are in harmony with us and even giving us a little push out to the edge. Then we have a leg up. The universe is here. It's got your back. It will give you a leg up. So trust yourself and trust the divine to be supportive of you. And then we have never-ending story. Hmm. I like that. You know, that's a nice nod to the Three of Swords and the Five of Cups. The story doesn't go away. How we live with it, though, is mutable. It's changeable if we allow it to be so. Consider it. All right, everybody. Have a beautiful, beautiful Wednesday. Peace, love, joy, happiness to each and every one of you. Namaste.